This is exactly what it looks like to build a successful dropshipping store this year. So we're going to reverse engineer it together in this video right now. What's up guys, Jake here. I've got 15 seconds to tell you why this video. You see, I wanted to make this video so this year you can finally create something that you own and you can get success in your dropshipping stores. So I've outlined literally thousands of e-com stores in my life and in my course. I've built multiple stores to over six figures a month. And I've really realized I've learned a lot about what doesn't work and what works with all these different kind of patterns, which is exactly what I'm going to be sharing with you in this video right now. So pretend you paid me good money to share this with you. And also don't be afraid to come back, skip to different sections once you've watched this so you can really understand, really digest it because I think this video will take a couple of rewatches for you to understand where you're at. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the screen and I've spent a countless amount of times building this from 0.5 all the way up to five and I'm going to digest this, show you exactly how this can help you in your e-com stores in 2023 and the preferable future. And I've built this store with these phases, so there's a good chance, in fact, there's a 100% chance, if you're running an e-com store, you're gonna fall into one of these categories right now. And my goal is to take you from phase two all the way up to phase five. If you're at 0.5, all the way up to phase five. Primarily, wherever you are in this growth timeline, I wanna take you up to the seven figure a month store because that's where you build an absolute long time legacy and that's how you get success in dropshipping. And yes, you've got permission to take notes, like I said, watch this again a million times if you have to, because this is all you're going to need in dropshipping. This is going to be the best video I think you'll ever watch. Trust me when I say this, you're going to want to watch this and really take notes because it's going to be super, super impactful. And I think this is actually better than most courses out there um, just with this video. Okay, so the first phase you're going to see is this 0.5 phase right here. And this is what I call the starting phase. And this really comes before anything else because this is where we really get on Shopify or on Wix or on e-commerce. This is where we really get on e-commerce platform itself. So if you don't have a store yet and you don't have 10 products or so, this is where you just need to get going and this is where you kind of are on this growth timeline. And if you've published a bunch of products, no matter how awful or great you think they are, this is where you're at. And really after your first milestone, after completing this, you're going to call them into a category which is your niche or niche, whatever kind of products you want to sell with your proof of concept method. Maybe you've done some research thing, hey, I want to get in the beauty niche, or you've done some heated product niches, or you're looking at electronics, whatever. At 0 0.5 to one, you want to have a niche, you want to have an e-com store ready open, and you're going to be familiar with the Shopify platform itself, if you choose that one. So you've began testing and you've gotten past the fear barrier. So for this first phase, there's not actually to be much said aside from, this is where you need to start breaking the barriers. And this is once you're starting. So if you're watching this and you're at this phase, you haven't started a store yet. So I want you to listen up. You need to get going. And this is where you break the barrier of starting a store itself. And how you do this is you really select simply three to five niches that you're interested in. You don't even know if they're good. You don't know how to make a copy for the product page yet. You don't know any of those things, but you're selecting those product niches. You're going on Google, you're searching, and you're saying, hey, this store looks good, or hey, I think I could sell this product well. You do simple changes, even if you want to, and you could even just make it the same. Then you push it to Shopify and you get it published. Now, the next phase is what I call this little compass right here. This is obviously different than all the other phases because it's <laughs> got a compass and it doesn't have a number. And that's the only reason. I'm just kidding, of course. Actually, this is very different than all the other phases. And I'll get into that a little bit extra in the video as we go on. But what you're really doing is you're kind of understanding where your store currently is right now. But not only that, as the name implies compass, you're kind of directing where you want to go. Do you want to go north? Do you want to go to east? Do you want to go south? Do you want to go west? Where are you going with your e-commerce store in general? And what you're really trying to do is you're trying to create you know, a plan for your success. And it's way much more exciting than I just made it sound out. Because if you were to come to me and say, hey, Jake, I really don't know where to go. I don't know the direction. I'm looking at this compass and I just don't know where to go. And I would say to you, this is, in fact, my favorite part of the whole growth timeline 2.0 because this is where you get clarity and this is where you're really getting direction for your store. And why does this really matter? Because, well, I've seen far too many store owners, dropshipping owners, and everybody in e-com run about like headless chickens. They don't know what direction to go in. And if you're feeling familiar, I'm going to get into that in a little bit later, but I want you to realize that this is normal. But my goal is to give you absolute clarity in this phase because you can't get out of this compass phase until you get past it and you're not going to get to phase one, phase two, phase three, and you're definitely not going to get to 
to seven figures a month until you get past this compass phase. Because what a lot of people do is they just go from one niche to one niche to one product to one other product, and they never actually get to phase one, which is getting clarity. All right, so the skills we're going to be focused on during the compass phase is getting a clear plan. I like to call it a store blueprint from where your store stands for, and as well as products that you're testing on your store. So whatever product you want to test, you can always go back to this blueprint and really understand, does it fit this? Does it fit my direction? And where do I want to go? And in addition, during this phase, we're also going to be looking at understanding the niche that we're targeting. You're targeting for your store very well. And we're going to be doing a deep dive on what's happening in that industry with all these different products. So you really understand how to speak that language. And that's really going to allow you to come back with a bunch of key products that you can start selling and really understand what products are going to do well and what products aren't going to do well. Because at this phase, you're going to be so familiar with that niche and with that product criteria that you are ready to dominate. And it's also during this compass phase that we're going to be focusing on the skill set of understanding and really taking a third party perspective on our store and understanding how to review it and audit your own store, as well as understand how to make your content evergreen, meaning whatever products you want to add to your store, that they get sales potentially forever, which is obviously <laughs> incredibly powerful. Now, I want to, you to understand something later on in this video. I'll be sharing some real examples so that you can kind of match where you are in this growth timeline to understand what a certain store in a phase looks like so you can understand what to do in that phase. Okay, so as far as milestones, if you've done this phase correctly, you've got your niche refined, meaning you have an idea of what it was over here and you really know this is what I'm targeting and you know exactly what your industry looks like in e-com. And then based on that, you're able to create what I call a store blueprint, which is a blueprint of what you're doing with your store. And so anything that isn't on your blueprint you simply don't do but everything that is on your blueprint you do very very well the other two milestones you're hitting during this phase is first you're understanding how to create an evergreen framework for your product on your store which means your products can indefinitely get sales forever and you're also understanding that you have self-awareness to understand when something goes wrong in your store of why it went wrong now for phase one the entire goal of this is to get implemented Everything we have done to get clarity of establishing the compass at this point, it's time to start implementing it. Now I do need to warn you, this is the danger zone in the first phase, because here's why. What I've seen is, these are the patterns I've seen in looking at thousands of dropshipping stores. Basically I've seen people that start, they get very excited at first, they say, yeah, I'm gonna make a dropshipping stores, this is awesome. And then they might get into the idea of, you know, this is exactly what I'm gonna do, this is the products I'm gonna test. I have all these cool ideas of how I'm gonna test these products. And when it comes down to actually doing it, they get overwhelmed. And that's the biggest, point of this phase is overwhelm kills this phase, which is why I'm going to simplify this for you right now. Okay, so here's where things start to get really interesting because the entire goal with this phase is obviously let's get implementing. Let's really start to understand the language of dropship and, and e-com in general. And this is where we really focus on a few key things, including the skill set of identifying what makes a good product idea in the first place versus one that's just not well researched and won't do well. And that plays heavily on the second skill set of this phase, which is making sure whatever your store design and the format you choose matches the product in that niche. For a simplified version, let me take you through an example. There's a store here, Manual, they made a product and obviously they're selling in the pair and men's kind of niche. And if they were to add some dog credit, what do you think would happen? It would be weird. It wouldn't resonate at all with their customers' avatars' problems, and they probably would not get a very good conversion rate. All right, so the next skill set we're going to be mastering through in this phase is having your testing phase pipeline established. This is where you've got several products under your belt, and you're now starting to optimize it a little bit, so you're not spending so much darn time playing about with the themes or your color scheme for your store, the fonts, etc. and you're having the set skills to make you more efficient with your testing of your products, because now we're starting to see some interesting results. And this is where not only do you have an idea of what you're doing, but you start heading in that direction. And it's really an awesome feeling because you've been implementing, you've been practicing, and you really get an early understanding of what's working on your store, which leads you to having an established testing pipeline. And it's kind of starting to work like clockwork here. And the results you're seeing is some early growth in your store, which is just super exciting. Now, I wanted to note here, I didn't really put any specific numbers on revenue growth because different products and different niches are obviously going to defer that and your store is obviously going to perform way different to somebody else's at this phase. And this takes us to the next phase, which is super exciting for me because I get to start sharing real examples of this phase. And really here at this stage, this is where I like to get the phase where you get proof of concept to your store. And what I really mean by that is you get products in a collection that really target in your avatar well and you're really starting to get traction at this point. Now, if you're struggling at this point and if you just don't know why, I can promise you one thing, it's because 
because you do not have proof of concept at this phase. And that really doesn't matter if you have under a thousand bucks a month on your store or you're doing a lot more. You really need to have proof of concept to move on to the next phase. All right, so it's really during this point that we really start to understand our key skill sets. The first being avatar interaction. Because at this stage, we're kind of early on understanding what makes a good product that targets our avatar well. But avatar interaction is super crucial at this point. So during this phase, we're focusing on the most effective ways to communicate this and understanding the difference between good feedback and, well, useless feedback. We're also finally ready during this phase to start understanding advanced product images, which by the way, no one is even doing. And if you can do this, this is game over for the competition. And this is one of my favorite points because up to this point, if I'm honest, product images, they don't really sink in at this point, at least not to a good degree that we can get them at during this phase. We're also focusing during this phase on visitors, people hitting our stores, be it buying or not, it is big during this phase. Anything that we can do to get our potential customers on our store for longer by scrolling down the page, maybe checking different products, etc. really reading the copy and seeing if it targets their pain points effectively because it's super critical if we can understand that it's targeting them well this is where we get on into the next phase because it's going to be early wins and I say early wins I mean getting really initial sales to come in consistently and there's some really early things that we can do to start to get this to happen so like I said at this stage I want to share some real examples and I'm going to answer one of the common questions I get well Jake what should I focus on right now with each of the stores or if your store is in the phase I'm struggling to find a winning product and I don't really know what to look for in terms of products and to answer that question I'm going to assume that you're using Google Ads because that's all I ever do and, and to understand how to do product research for different platforms and ad platforms is completely different. So I'm assuming the question is for Google Ads for product research. But firstly, you want to sell something that has a high enough search volume with Google Ads. Now, I like products with more than 50K plus, but if I can find a product that has a million searches a month on a product keyword, for example, in a beauty niche, it's very easy to scale, but also keep in mind competition will be much higher than most niche products. Then I simply see what's ranking for those keywords. And I really analyze the top three to five stores and I really ask myself, how can I come in here and compete? Can I design a better store, a more branded feel? Can I compete on the price? Can I offer better pain problems that the customer wants solving? You have to ask yourself these questions and if it's a yes, get it listed and you will start getting some traction. And now let's talk results for phase two here. Here it's very unlikely if you're following everything correctly, you're at least hitting one case a day in sales. Now that's not a promise. Obviously you could be way higher, you could be just a little bit lower, but this is what I see on average at this phase. Now in addition to that, you've also managed one of the most important things, which is the key skill sets of dropshipping. Meaning you're pretty darn good at product research, you're pretty good at understanding the customer's pain points, you're pretty good at store design, you're pretty good at giving that branded feel. You're obviously always going to be improving at this point, but at this point you're really starting to get some traction and you're thinking, hey, this could be a real thing here. I need to keep going. And this is really because you got that initial proof of concept. And I just need to say this for people that are say, hey, I'm getting consistent results. Or if you're feeling stuck, this is probably because you missed something in phase one or phase 0 0.5 or the compass phase. You got to get that initial proof of concept to really move on to phase three at that point. If you're not hitting the roundabout to 1K in sales, something is broken in this growth timeline and you need to go and fix that leak. And now we're on to phase three. So the big goal of phase three is to get established. Now that's a simplified way of saying, hey, I've got proof of concept, but I want to prove that. So during this phase, the primary skill sets at first are being able to predict success and pre-plan breakouts on our products. Because the amount of experience we've had up to this point, we're starting to be able to use our time much more wisely and really understand before we test the product that if it's going to work or fail immediately. The next thing we're going to do is really start making our products way more memorable. Because like I said, this phase is about building your establishment. Now, the more we can do to make our products more memorable, the more likely our customers are going to continue to buy and share it on Facebook or just share it to their friends. And we're also going to be focusing on tightening the store up itself. Really what I mean by that is making the layout absolutely spot on and really honing down on our customer avatar again and getting the messaging on point. So an example here is this store here. Now they're doing several things really well. Not only are they becoming more and more established in their niche, but they really came here with their own custom images. Their messaging is on point with solving their dream customers pain points and their overall layout is just ideal. Easy to use, very elegant to make the customer buy at a high conversion rate. Now when we compare it to a store like this, now I've seen the same copy and pasted product full a thousand times. The website's clunky, it's slow, it feels heavy when I'm scrolling and the worst part, it's just another generic store selling a bunch of low quality AliExpress products. Can I do well? Sure, but I'm not going to get the same establishment as the first one, let alone the repeat sales at high conversion rate. Now this is where you start to see some really cool results, including that your customers are growing. And another one is your product testing is going up a lot. Because you've got proof of 
concept and you've done the step correctly and you're focusing on creating a lot of better products. And in addition, I put 50K a month. Now that's what you should be starting to create in revenue. Now it might be more, it might be less, but really 2K per day is where you're kind of at in this phase. Profit is going to completely depend on your product, of course. And like I said, this is where it gets really exciting. You're thinking, hey, I'm actually creating income here. Hey, this could be something I can keep going and really establish. And if you are again struggling at this point, it's really because you need to go back, you need to fix one of the pipes that you've mixed. And once you can fix that, that's when you can start getting to the next phase. Because if you're thinking, hey, I'm not at 50K a month yet, it's because you've not went through this phase properly. Now we're ready to talk about suppliers. And by suppliers, I mean fixing some leaks that can potentially hurt us going forward that you may have in your store. And really this is what this phase is all about. So your big goal here is to not be drop shipping anymore. Now you might already not be dropping, but chances are you probably are at this point. But I want you to think of it this way. You can still drop ship, of course, but I want you to think of ways that you can make this more evergreen and really build a moat where no other products, no other brands can touch you. Because we're at the point now where this is definitely replacing our salary. And if we're still following the drop shipping model, yes, it can still work, of course, but we really want to dominate and we really want to make sure no one else can touch us. And it's also going to reduce a lot of stress and fulfillment time as well. So what we're going to do is we're either going to get a bulk buy to a fulfillment company like ShipBob or something like Honest Fulfillment. For example, if these guys, they handle everything from supplying, packaging and shipping. It's almost like a hybrid version of drop shipping. And like I said, we do this so we can build a moat and we're now able to dominate a more branded store. And as a bonus, we're able to get, in most cases, our products much cheaper, leaving us bigger margins. So it's just a win-win. And now we're on to phase five, which the whole point of this phase five is to get 100K months. And like I said in the previous phases, this is going to really depend if your search volume is enough with Google Shopping. As if your initial product only has a thousand searches a month, it's going to be pretty hard. Even if you wanted to branch over to other countries, it's probably not going to be possible. But if we do have enough search volume, the main focus is going to be adding other countries. So if you're, let's say you're doing 50K a month in the UK, just by adding USA by targeting them, you're probably going to be getting 150K in the next couple of months. And this is why phase four is so important too, because if you've got your suppliers on point and you're not drop shipping, a lot of stress is taken off at this point. And what we can also do at this point is we're starting to maximize our LTV, our lifetime customer value. And also more importantly, customers that maybe didn't buy, we can start retargeting them on Facebook and other platforms so we can bring as much profit back into the business as possible. At this stage, we're also making more than enough to hire some VAs. So simply going up work, get two VAs or maybe three or four. But at this point, we're just trying to keep you scaling without breaking it. Because if we're still answering all the emails and doing all that kind of stuff, we're not really focusing on what's building the business and moving it forward. What you want to start to do is once you get in stage four and five is you start taking off all these hats and you start handing them to other people. And what they're going to do is give you a lot more free time. So once you can start scaling this further. Now I need to address one of the biggest questions I always get when building dropshipping stores. And that is people that say, well, can you just show me how to do it? Or is it best to do it myself or etc. Now, let me speak clearly on this. Of course, you can go and do this growth timeline. Like I just gave it to you for free. You can go and do this and you will get results, of course, without doing any courses. By the way, you can check it out if you want, but it's only for people that are super, super serious. But of course you can do this yourself. And like I said, it's 100% possible, but I've seen this time and time again. It's obviously much more difficult for multiple reasons. Number one, it's not a sequence. And a lot of people just literally need a step-by-step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step -by -step guide and someone to keep them accountable. And the second issue, it's really hard to go alone and this is why you'll typically see comments out there saying hey i'm a new drop shipper and then people will reply back and forward saying hey let's just grind this out etc etc and usually after a couple months they're gone and they're moved on to sma or something but what's better is having a group of dedicated people that all speak the same language and the third thing that makes it difficult is it's really hard to get external feedback from peer-to-peer -peer people from people that are actually running e-com stores themselves and not just passively giving advice but people that are actually experts and running them so of course you can do it yourself but it's going to take a lot more time and it's probably going to take a lot more wasted money and ad spend and testing etc. So you've made it this far and firstly I want to say congratulations you've shown yourself that you can actually focus for a decent amount of time this is probably one of my longest videos ever and you're obviously serious about getting results with drop shipping. and secondly if you do want to check out the program below make sure you want to book a call with me it's going to be me personally that's answering the calls but I only want people that are 100% serious that are thinking about investing themselves and taking their stores or starting a store and growing it to this next level so super appreciate it and like I said if you're on the call I'll speak to you soon all right as promised let's talk about how to use this system for your specific store first of all I've got to address little 20 products and all these arrows pointing to it and that's because even if you think your store is at anywhere across here I want you to make sure that you've at least tested or researched 20 products in all different niches and this is kind of the number I see for a lot of feedback and a lot of clarity 
to be met as you're traveling across this timeline. But I want to talk about the infamous compass that we said we would touch on later at the start. And I realize this phase is totally different than others because this phase right here tends to build on a skill set of each other. Because if I could draw a line to all of these, I would, but everything has to circle back to the compass on getting direction. Because let's say, for example, you're at phase two, then you move on to phase three. If you don't have a direction and you don't have what way to go, it's all going to be useless and you're never going to get to that seven figure or six figure a month, which is whatever your end goal is. And the way I see it at this point, you really have two choices and you can choose one of the things pretty much. So that being said, guys, I really hope that growth timeline, go and take a screenshot, go back and watch this video a bunch of times. Like I said, really pretend you've paid me good money for this because that really is all you need. But like I said, if you want that extra help, book a call below. Um, but only do that if you're 100% serious. It comes with a private Discord as well. A lot of people have been asking for something like this to just everybody connect. It comes with weekly calls. We've got a head coach. Um, it's me and Elias running this right now. So if you are interested, book it. But if, if you're not, that's absolutely fine. I really appreciate you watching the channel, but I want you go, to go back and watch this growth timeline 2.0 and really understand what phase you're at. Because I promise you, once you get to phase two and phase three, you're really starting to make some good money and you realize that e-com is a real thing and you are getting massive success. So, see you in the next one.